at Rubber Band, we empower each other through positivity, kindness, and practical advice. Join a community of thousands of peers who understand the unique challenges you face. Rubber Band, company agnostic, low ego, high empathy, always supportive. Think you know Video My Job? Think again. We're no longer just a simple mobile app for video job ads. Think of us as a library of employee story videos embedded on your career site. Kind of like your very own YouTube, except you own the platform and not the marketing team. With Video My Job, you have a suite of enterprise-grade tools to plan video campaigns, send filming links, stay on message with AI scripts, and automatically brand your content. Want to know how we're helping talent teams like Deloitte create and publish 102 fully branded employee videos in just four days with zero editing required? Book a demo with Gav at videomyjob.com. Welcome listeners to today's episode of the Rubber Band Podcast, where I am joined by extra special guest, Lewis Olcott. Now, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I live and work on, the Wadawarran and Jajawarran people. I recognise their continuing connection to the land and waterways. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and I would like to extend this to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. The theme for today's episode is AI and social media, revolutionising recruitment for a digital era. And as I said, I am joined by extra special guest, Lewis Olcott. How are you, Lewis? I'm very well, Eden. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing really well. Where, where are you joining us from today? Where's home for you? The home for me is Footscray, although I am going to be moving again very soon out to my house in Amesbury, which is far out west in Melbourne. Oh, fantastic. Well, I know Footscray well. I'm Ballarat, so my V-line goes through Footscray. Um, it gets very busy when we get to Footscray, but <laughs> anyway, yeah, really that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, before we kick off our topic today, and this is one that is, is go- I'm going to learn a lot from you today because I'm not, look, I'm not Mr. Techie. I think everyone that knows me knows I'm not Mr. Techie and I'm always trying to learn <laughs> from people like yourself. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be listening just as much as our audience today and learning as much as we can. But I'd love to just hear a little bit about your, your career um, and your profession before we do kick off the topic. So can you sort of tell us a little bit about your experience? Yeah, sure. So look, I'm first and foremost a contractor and uh, a strategic talent partner. So a lot of the work that I do is collaborating with businesses, building recruitment ecosystems. So you know, not just focusing on filling roles, but also looking at ways in which we can design and create meaningful connections between candidates and companies. So I've worked across quite a few different industries. Most recently, I've been working in energy infrastructure, but I've covered technology and professional services. And actually, most recently, I'm now supporting a technology company that is working within AI, which obviously is quite fitting with the conversation that we're having today. So most importantly, though, I love helping businesses refine their recruitment strategies. So I'm a big believer in evidence-based recruitment methodologies um, and driving that people-centric culture. So I think, you know, especially with the topic today about AI and social media, I think they're probably my two key components and something that I'm really passionate about. And just reminding, I guess, not just our hiring managers, but candidates about recruitment being a human experience. So, which is where, you know, AI, interestingly enough, actually plays the biggest part. Well, I've got a big question for you to kick off AI and social media. Tell me, how exactly is AI impacting recruitment? And what does it mean for the day-to-day work of a recruiter? Huge question, and you could probably talk for half an hour, but what does it, what does it, yeah, what does it, what does it mean for us? Sure. Well, look, there's a couple of components that we focus on when we think about how AI impacts recruitment and, and what it means for us as, as recruiters. So I think the one thing I'll probably caveat this with in our conversation today is I think that a lot of people are still quite, I don't want to say afraid, but maybe wary of artificial intelligence and you know there is this big concern around ai replacing jobs but actually again and we we may talk about this a bit later on in our in our call but this is where i probably would think about the company that i'm working in where we're using ai to actually impact and improve the way 
humans work. So from a recruitment perspective, you know, that would include things like automating time-consuming tasks. So, you know, that's your CV screening, candidate selection, uh, candidate comparisons, note formations. And when I say note formations, you know, I think recruiters, what we focus on most and, and most prominently is quickly writing down, you know, when we're in an interview or when we're doing a telephone screen or when we're doing a job brief, we're very quickly writing notes down. But let's be fair, I actually, maybe I'll, I'll speak for myself, half the stuff I write is jargon. Um, and probably, uh, yeah, I, I will very quickly write bullet points. Then sometimes I'll look back and think, what did I mean by that? great thing about artificial intelligence is the more it learns about you, the more it can help you reshape your notes. So, you know, it's really important that we use AI for these, as I said, really time consuming tasks. So, you know, what does that mean? That very much kind of focuses on freeing up recruiters to focus on relationship building and more strategic tasks. And it shifts us from being that reactive to pro, uh, proactive recruiter and become more strategic talent partners. So, you know, this is going to help us improve efficiencies across administration and maintain that need for human touch as well in our candidate interactions. And what I mean by that is when we're looking at using AI to very quickly automate everything out where it's kind of the, I get the part, the part of your brain where it formulates everything, puts it all into sequential order and really kind of helps inspire you to, to, to refine. So, Whereas it takes all the information you've fed it, ingested that data, and then it reads it all out for you in a much clearer context. You can then continuously refine it and add, you know, what I would probably say are the emotional touches to our role because, you know, recruiters are very good at the emotional intelligence. Mm. Um, and it really kind of drives us to make sure that we, we kind of refine that data and actually can and, and skew it more towards, you know, where we see... So whereas artificial intelligence will do the technical side and, and kind of rank things technically, you can then re-rank it and, and finalize it by adding your emotional touch to it. And then when I kind of refer to things like the relationship building or strategic tasks, because you've already, you know, let, let's, let's be fair in recruitment, EQ is an exhausting part of our role. I think what people don't realize is the emotional hold it has on us and the emotional uh, impact it has on us on our day to day. So I guess if you are able to free some of that technical energy or some of that energy from driving all that technical work, you can really kind of increase that emotional intelligence and, and focus on your hiring managers, focus on your candidates and actually allow AI to do the heavy lifting. So, you know, for example, today, me and you here, here talking, we can just enjoy our conversation. We can, mm. we can actually get to know one another and allow artificial intelligence to do the brunt work. Yeah. Absolutely. And it will do our transcript for us, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I don't have to sit here exactly. and transcribe everything anymore. I don't have to take notes like I used to when I first kicked off the podcast. So it's, a, you know, it's working for me. But I mean, there, there are a lot of elements to what you discuss there, everything from CV screening to note taking to interview scheduling, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. Like, what, what, what do you feel are the main areas where AI is the most useful in recruitment today? So I guess there's, there's kind of three areas that I look at when I think about what I use, use AI for. Now, bearing in mind, everyone will use it for different means. So I'll just give you, a, 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 I guess, the example from where I, where I focus. So I use mine mostly across CV screening, candidate comparison and assessment. So in terms of CV screening, the great thing about using artificial intelligence is that when you are looking at, let's say, 50 resumes, you know, you, let's say you, you've done, you, you've put up a job advert, you've got 50 candidates on there. Um, you're going to very quickly reduce that down from your own tasking, i.e. you're going to remove all the resumes that just already don't fit the role, either geolocate, uh, like location-wise, salary-wise, uh, working rights-wise, whatever your, your fundamentals are. After that, you're then going to have to really get down to the nitty gritty. And that's where you kind of your x-ray scanning comes into it. So really deciphering what are the can what type of candidates are you looking for and how do they ref how do they relate to the position description that you've taken uh, that you've um, written and in conjunction with your HR and your or your hiring managers, you know, how are them candidates going to rank compared to your position description? So that's where artificial intelligence comes in. Now, what I kind of explained at the beginning. You can also use AI for that but in terms of like location, working rights, et cetera. But again, that really, it really does depend on how advanced you are with your, with your AI tool and, and that what you've already taught it. Um, most 
ATSs now, when you look at the likes of Job Adder, for example, or Springboard, you can very quickly filter that out with the with the AI filter that they've included and ensuring that there are questions in your in your uh, application process that very quickly helps uh, rule them out. But what I would probably use my AI tool for is once I've kind of selected, say, my 10 candidates that I want to whittle down to maybe only five that I want to telephone screen, I will use AI for that as well. So I will use it to very quickly decide that based off the rules that I give it, this is the position description, these are the key requirements of the role. Can you rank my candidates for me? Using that artificial intelligence to very quickly scan it, your job here is to then ensure that what it's done or what it's what it's fed you, the information it's fed you, is correct. So you're you know you're you're there handling the data afterwards and saying, okay, yes, it's understood my questions. This candidate is the is the best candidate. Or again, once that check is done, using your EQ next and saying, okay, these are the candidates I want to do based off of you know maybe there might be some diversity angles that you haven't fed it. Um, I tend to try and keep my DNI out of the artificial intelligence tool. And that's purely because I think that's a much more human centric task. You know, we yeah. add the artificial intelligence, we, we add the, the EQ layer after the AI has done its job. Um, mm -hmm. But again, we'll come back to that a bit later on because there actually are ways in which we can use AI to help with DEI, but it's in a different aspect. So the second part that I'm really um, driven by is candidate comparisons. So once I've done my telephone screening, once I've actually been able to do that human element, that human touch, and I've said, um, you know, obviously I've done my telephone screens and they're usually quite well detailed. I will then use my AI tool to help me rank the candidates and then I will give it new criteria. So you're kind of constantly teaching your AI tool to uh, understand the way in which you work, which is the most important part of AI, is that you must continuously teach it what you're looking for because AI can be biased if you teach it to be biased. So, mm. and that's... You know, when, later on, when we, when we kind of think about other parts of, you know, what, what, you know, as to what we need to watch out on AI, that's something that we'll kind of cover off as well. But um, I think with candidate comparison, it's really important that you are constantly teaching it what you want it to understand. And that's where I, uh, you know, that's where I can make my matrices very quickly um, by using AI. And again, this is quite a long task if you're doing this for multiple roles. So it really does speed up the process for you to kind of get yeah. you to that, that final decision. And then lastly, assessments. So I think assessments are important. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, we're, we're in this whole new digital era, as, as the title of this episode <laughs> says, right? And, and I, I want to talk about the other element of this, this new digital era. So, era. so tell me, how does social media fit into the recruitment process in this digital age? Sure. So, look, I think first and foremost, the way that I look at it, um, I always look at it. I always look at social media from the recruiter's perspective. You know, it is really important to look at social media and how it fits in to a company's process in the digital age or, their, or the company's recruitment process. But I think, you know, what I what I'm more passionate about is helping individual recruiters because companies will have their own brand. They'll have marketing teams or they'll have like social media gurus helping them. I think it's really important that recruiters focus on their personal connections, their own passions, you know, their uh, own candidate experience, et cetera. Because let's be honest, Eden, like candidates buy into us, not mm. the company. So they, they've already chosen to either apply for that company or when they respond to your email or when they respond to your connection requests or conversations that you're having, it's because they've probably already done their homework on the company nine times out of 10. They're like, that is the company I want to go work for. I want to go work for this professional services firm or, or et cetera. Or I want to go work in this tech field. I think the next part and the, the biggest hurdle that plays here is the recruitment's pro is the recruiter's process. So first and foremost, building your personal connections. So we are storytellers. Um, and that's something which if you look at my LinkedIn, um, you know, I'm very proud of being is a storyteller because it lets mm. you create a personal connection with candidates by sharing your experience, your values, your approach to recruitment. You know, a candidate is going to be more likely to trust and engage with us if they know something about you that's genuine and relatable. So, you know, the next point there is tell them about, and again, it depends on how comfortable you are. I'm a very open person. Um, I'm happy to share my stories and my journey because I think that if a candidate understands and sees my vulnerability, 
they will trust me more. And it's not about trying to hoodwink them. I'm not trying to hoodwink yeah, them. I want them to, I, I want to remind them that in a recruitment process, you're talking to another human. They're, mm. you know, at the end of, of both, and it's, and it's the flip of the coin. From our perspective as recruiters and talent professionals, there is a human on the other side of this process. You know, so when you're ruling out that resume, when you're ruling out that candidate after an interview or a telephone call, just remember there's a human on the other end with a with a mortgage or rent to pay or children to feed or dogs to groom or a holiday to go on or a family member to visit back up from their, their native countries. So every time you make a decision, you have a decline or approve or take that person forward or, or, or whatever part of that process, you've got to remember that you're impacting someone's life and we don't know what's going on. So always humanizing each recruitment pro and we look there are times that we make a mistake when we we, we might accidentally forget to email someone back again human human we're human yeah. we make human errors as well so but it's about owning it and always putting that at the forefront of your work so mm. you know social media plays a massive part in humanizing the process so what i really love seeing is recruiters talking about their processes what they do well what a candidate's feedback was or what candidates like about their process, um, as well as like the pitfalls, not just talking about the positives, but we have to talk about the constructive points because, you know, I might look at some of your social media posts and think, oh, actually Eden had a really great idea about removing this from his process. I'm going to look at my process and see, do we do the same thing? Like what has been the impact in in my company? And then I take that back as a lesson learned. So sometimes where you may have found a constructive learn will impact the whole industry because it was like, great, actually, I've seen quite a few people talk about that. Let's be proactive and take it out of our process of what happens to us. So mm. you only do this by sharing on social media. And, and I'm, I'm, what I'm really keen to do now is to kind of connect the dots there between the two, between AI and social media. Like how can we use AI to support with our social media strategies? How do, how do we how do we get the two talking to each other? Sure. So, look, when, when you think about the automation of job ads now, for example, like we're using AI now to optimise job posting. So we use it to base it on times, what platforms to use. So we can actually use AI to tell us when is the best time to put a post on LinkedIn or or to to post it onto LinkedIn and and seek. Um, Actually, looking at the data, do we have a lot of technologists on seek at the moment? Uh, You know, are there a lot more contractors on there or perms on there? So it's about being more strategic with your job ads, first and foremost. So actually using the AI to tell us where should I post it? What time should I post it? What day should I post it on? Like I wasn't aware of this until recently, but there actually are like specific days that are really good from data perspective, from a data perspective, when to post on LinkedIn. So like where, you know, to avoid certain days and certain times, um, you know, and, and again, and, and we know this actually from, from years and years of recruitment, most people um, who are looking for a new role tend to look at it on their way to work or from work. So we mm. use AI to tell us, okay, what time are most people going to work? You know, and also using a bit of logical sense, would be between somewhere between seven and nine. Okay, great. So I want to do some of my job postings then. And then again, same thing in terms of what job boards are people using more at the moment as well. So again, using that data to to very quickly define where am I going to send it. But also as well, like what I find really helpful with AI in terms of social media strategies is helping it do your EVP. So when I'm going to post it on LinkedIn, I want to, you know, I, I use my AI tool sometimes. Not, it, I never use it to replace my humor because obviously I'm a very acquired taste. But <laughs> I would say that I, <laughs> at times, but um, I would say, I would say, like, what I get it to do is to inspire me. Like, I, I, I sometimes ask the AI tool, "What benefits should I focus on?" So, and, and again, I, you know, I'm, I probably sound like a crazy person, but I actually talk to my my AI tools, and I get it to advise me. You know. And especially when we look at things like data insights from across the, from the, from the, you know, from our like global HR players like uh, Hayes and Randstad, who do like really helpful um, employer branding surveys, is actually using the AI tool to inspire you to write the right things on your post. So, hey, like come and work with us because of these benefits that we're, you know, that we're 
we're working on like you know the, the parental cover or you know one day a week in the office etc like obviously i'm using very bland points but you know it, but getting it to actually make your uh social media more enticing um mm. and again don't don't just copy and paste it on there use it as a skeleton and then start to feed in your personality because that again going back to our previous point we want it to be us it's our story and that kind of leads us into authenticity as well it's about creating an authentic recruitment voice but not you know reinventing the wheel let them do the skeleton let you add the fat around it yeah Um, it's really interesting it's it's really interesting, Lewis, because I, you know, you talk about um, like even the, the moments in time and the sort of content that people want to engage with and how we use AI and how we use that data to make those decisions. I mean, I know myself from podcasting. Yeah, I remember interviewing someone, you know, a few months ago and I said, oh, yeah, I'm releasing it at two o'clock on Friday afternoon. And they were mortified. They're like, why would someone listen to an industry podcast that late in the afternoon when they're about to finish work? But the, the AI and the data is telling me that people listen to the Rubber Band podcast of a Saturday morning when they're taking their kids to sport or when they're laying in bed and having, you know, Maccas for breakfast and, you know, like, <laughs> but, but you would assume because it's an industry podcast, you would listen to it when you're at work, right? So you've, you, you have to break down some of those assumptions and actually listen to, to what you're being, you know, what, what the data is telling you, right? Um and, and you talked earlier, and I really do want to talk about this because it's a, it's an important one, and it's around you know diversity, inclusion, and equity. I I want to know how AI and social media tools can actually support diversity and inclusion in hiring, and not work against it. Because I think a lot of people feel that it's going to work against your inclusion strategies, your diversity strategies, because it's robotic, and and that's not the case, is it? No, I completely agree. And, and it actually is a really great question because when, when I was saying you need, need to be mindful about what data you feed to DEI, uh, sorry, what, what data do you feed to the AI in, in, in regards to DEI, you need to think about rather than using it as a tool to find diversity, I use it as a tool to reduce bias. So what I mean by that is we have to it's not a case of not trusting the artificial intelligence about removing DEI focuses because at the end of the day, it is a tool and it doesn't have a human element to it. It's not a, or it doesn't have a soul to it. Um, I find that when you work with hiring managers, there is still this kind of outdated view that the most technical person for the role, the person who hits as close to 100% of that PD or interview is the right person for the role. I think me and you both know having been in recruitment for many, many, many years is that <laughs> that is not a, that is not the right way to focus. You know, you've got some people who may only have three years of experience, but they have not just the, you know, not just the, the qualification, uh, but also the, um, the, the correct emotional elements for the role. You might have a return to work parent, who, yes, may have been off for the last year for whatever reason um, in terms of raising uh, a family, either raising a a child or looking after a family member who are, you know, still have the absolute fine technical capabilities. But what we cannot change is a hiring manager's human nature of saying, but they've been out of work for a year or that person hasn't got five years or five to seven years of experience. Ironically, they become the robot. Um, mm. And that that's mm-hmm. where we use AI bias reduction. It's fantastic. What I try to do, um, if I know that I'm not, if, if I know that the angle that I'm going on, and th- this is where the human element comes in, where we as recruiters have to manage the AI tool. The most important part here when we do bias reduction is going to be around telling the tool what you want it to do. So if you know that you've got a hiring manager who is just going to gung-ho no matter what, look at that very first person that you've put on the matrix selection. And we know that we need to kind of increase diversity. We need to ensure that they're not just going to hire that person who is, and I'm just going to use an example because technology, as we know, is very much heavily male influence and not female influence. I will use a bias reduction tool. So not only just running 
your job ads through gender decoders to increase your candidate sourcing. But in terms of the hiring manager, if you put that selection through and you tell your AI tool, remove any kind of reference in this matrix to gender, qualification lengths, uh, technical terms of years, make this a, a bias reduced candidate serve a candidate skill selection report it will drive everything and remove any kind of way in which a hiring manager can look at that um from a bias perspective and only focus on the skill sets alone and that really again reduces the the impact so and i you know i i, I stand by it i think it's a fantastic way of working but it, again we have to as recruiters and as humans choose when it's the right time to do bias reduction. I wouldn't use that in every part of my process because sometimes it's about us connecting with the hiring manager and doing our role and saying, okay, this is my shortlist. I have X amount of males and X amount of females. And the reasons why these candidates on here are X, Y, Z. This is the candidate that I've selected and these are the reasons why. So I think it's about us being cautious with this tool but also knowing when is the right time to use things like that. Totally, totally, because, right, and, I, and, and, and I'm going to get this point across because I, I talk about this a lot in working within a technology company. We want to be biased at times because we have low female gender representation. And that's where the human element comes into it, as you as you say and as you describe, where we want to get more females interviewed than men. Now, if we remove and use the bias reduction tool and even the playing field, the playing field's not even because there are naturally going to be 80% applications from men and 20 from women. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not equal at the moment. So, you know, it's choosing the right moment. I agree with you. You know, I think bias reduction is is so important and, and these tools are fabulous, but you're right, you know, with, and, and that's where, you know, when people are afraid of AI removing us from the process, we need to be there because we need to make those calls and make those exactly. decisions and sometimes be bold. Exactly and actually break yeah. down everything that we're doing to be that bold, to say we need to shift the dial here, right? And, you know, th this leads us into, I suppose, the ethical side. You know, people are mm. afraid because they don't know when to flex up and flex down, right? But what, what are some of the other challenges or some of the ethical considerations recruiters should be aware of when they're using AI in recruitment? Yeah, look, I think... Kind of just going on from our previous point, there is, like I said, we, we have to be mindful that we can create bias in our algorithms. So, you know, the, the only thing that AI does is replicate. So if we are teaching it to be biased, it will be biased. Yeah, again, there's, there's no soul element to a, an AI tool. It is a completely technical, it, it's a just, it's a program. So, and that's very basic. I'm sure it's much more advanced than just a program, but that's just my basic brain. But, you know, it is what it is. So if we teach it to be biased, it will be biased. So we must continuously monitor what we feed it. And that kind of adds quite nicely to my next point in terms of things like privacy concerns and transparency. So we have to think about the ethical use of AI and screening. Um, and we also have to ensure that we, as humans, respect privacy. So really depends on the type of person you are. I'm, I'm a very big defender of privacy. I think we all have a right to our own data, you know, and what we share and what we don't share. It's up to you how much you want to and don't want to. But if you are screening a candidate, searching a candidate, and you're using the AI tool, not only do you as a person need to think, is this data that I'm putting into the tool ethically aligned um, for what purposes am I using it for and how do I destroy it so the one thing I can always 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 highlight before we use AI tools is learn how to use it first um, test it on yourself depending on how comfortable you are sharing your data with AI tools do your research on the tool um, and also find out how does data get destroyed mm -hmm. so for example, if you are using a tool like, let's say, ChatGPT, there are functions in ChatGPT where you can delete the data off. So not only can you delete it from your search bar, but there is a way that you can go into the settings 
and you can delete it off or you can and, and let's say like google for example google are quite quite good at this now and i think it's just from years and years of of you know, global scale conversations is there are ways the right to be forgotten for example so it's about before i use this tool do i know how to delete the data i put into it and do i know how to um only use it for certain ethical means um and then that leads into things like transparency as well if you are going to be an ai pioneer you must make it really clear with your candidates that you are using ai in the process yeah. and how can it affect that application I, I don't think i can stress that well enough if you are going to be feeding ai into your um if you're going to be using your 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 ai for feeding information in terms of your recruitment process it's about being really clear from the offset with your candidates i'm using an ai tool for this so and i think this is probably going to lead us to like an industry question in, in the years to come and someone like yourself who will who will hopefully drive this as a leader in our community is i think you know maybe this is something where in the time to come do we need to include that in our adverts like in our job yeah. adverts you know is that I something you know so. back in it mm. yeah i think it's coming i think you're right um and i would argue probably soon and so and, and you yeah know, I, I, I think it needs to yeah because i think we're, we're we're all to a degree now embracing it uh mm -hmm. some, some more than others some way more advanced right we've got people like you that that are experts in the field that are teaching people like me right but it's it, it's just moving so quickly we're, we're going to have to and you know i'm seeing things like deep fake interviews and you know where candidates are going in and they're interviewing with me and it's not actually me and you know <laughs> there's even like yeah. a, there's, there's someone in my team one of my consultants that uh had a candidate that thought he was an AI for the phone screen and emailed him afterwards and said, oh, I just did the phone screen with your um, AI tool. And he was like, no, 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 that was actually me. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, it's happening, right? And he's he's actually, you know, like he's, he's got an American accent and I think they just thought he was a robot. But um, the poor guy, because he's, <laughs> he's far from it. But look, the, these things are happening and I think these considerations are happening mm. with the general public and with our candidates. Now, I've got a few uh, final questions I want to ask you. And the first one really is, what advice do you have for recruiters who are looking to embrace AI and social media tools? Yeah. So, look, I think the best way to start is by taking more small steps because the AI is incredibly powerful. Um, you don't need to overhaul your whole process overnight as well. I, so I think people think you either have to go hard or go home. And it's like, no, start with something simple. So how I started, I started off a CV screening and then I, I slowly built it into my process. So it saved me loads of time with like filtering candidates and, you know, based on specific criteria. And then it was a really great way of me being able to understand how the AI tool could work for me. So testing it, you know, slowly mm. but surely is the best way to go forward. And another easy win is going to be automating things like your interview scheduling. So letting AI handle that back and forth logistics. And then that means that you can free up more time for strategic tasks as well. So, um, when it comes to things like social media, you have to think beyond just posting jobs. That was when social media started. You know, with the advent now of artificial intelligence and social media, like we have to think about using it for our platforms, you know, engaging people, storytelling. Like, you know, I've used my platforms on things like LinkedIn, not just to share my roles, but I've built my personal brand through it and shown my audience who I am, what I stand for, you know, why recruitment is my passion. Um, and then that really just drives my candidates to connect with me more on that human side. And it really helps me stand out as someone who actually cares um, about finding the right fit and not just, you know, putting a bum on a seat. So, mm. but I think, you know, it's important as well that we have to think about transparency because that is a key point. So like candidates need to really know that AI is, is involved in their process. Because it's going to build trust with them um, and explain how technology works in their favor. So, you know, if myth about ai is that people think it's cutting corners it's not it's actually increasing efficiency so you and i can actually get to know the candidate better so it's really important that recruiters do that and then lastly upskilling is absolutely vital um ai and social media are going to constantly evolve hence it's artificial intelligence um so we have to keep up to date with new tools and new trends 
um, you know, AI handles the administrative side, but the human element is completely irreplaceable. You know, we are still there. You know, we need to offer that empathy. We need to build the relationship and we need to understand what motivates candidates. So we can then continuously build on our human elements, but don't forget to upskill, you know, and it, again, it's not just ChatGPT or, or LinkedIn. We're talking about understand the AI tools in your ATSs. Like Job and I have, in, have become exponential in using AI in their um, ATS. So it's about reaching out to either the account managers of these um, products you're using, or if you have a an authorized person to do so, reach out to them and say, hey, can we get them to do some quarterly training or six month training or annual training? That was something I did a lot with my team actually when I was managing teams in one of my previous companies was actually getting involved with LinkedIn, getting involved with um, the some of the software that we were using at the time and saying, hey, can you come in and do some upskilling just so then we can continuously be in front of the curve? Like I need to make sure that we are using these tools to you know a, make, make our money's worth out of it, but also it upskills you as an individual. Yeah, that's a really valuable thing for you to take to your next company. Uh, 100%. Now I've got one one more question for you, if that's okay, Lewis. Thank you. Um, sure. How important is it for recruiters to find their authentic recruitment voice? Um, in this world, in this digital age, we're talking about AI, we're talking about, you know, <laughs> um, you know, AI in social media. Like, how can we make sure that recruiters are still being authentic and getting that, that story across, as you described, that storytelling? Mm. Well, look, finding your own authentic voice is probably the most important thing that you can do as a recruiter. I think that is rule number one, discover who you are. Um, sounds pretty simple, but it's not. We are complex beings. Um, when you're authentic, candidates are going to see a real person. So it's not just someone who's trying to fill a role. It, you know, It's helping them connect with you on a much personal level. So Look, for me, I make sure that my personality comes through in all my interactions. So I don't try to be overly formal. I don't try, you know, or, or distant by any means either. You know, I, you know, it's not who I am. I share parts of my story and my passions and even my struggles. You know, like quite recently, I've, I've been pretty open and transparent about like my mental health um, and my journey as a, as, a, as a human. You know, I'm a very proud gay man and um, which is pretty evident from my social media and you know i don't just campaign about things like that because you know i want equal rights for lgbt of course i do you know i want equal rights for all but i campaign about it because it's still a concern for me and it's a part of my authenticity i'm i am first and foremost a dei advocate in recruitment that's why i do this job and why i love my job and it's about using my passion um, and my struggles in, in the past to help candidates not only feel more comfortable about being open with me, but letting them see that, you know, for example, when we work in companies that we know are big advocates of DEI, when we get to be not just the employee brand, you know, not just the ambassador to the employee, to the employee brand, but we're an ambassador for the role and saying, look, if you, if you join us, these are the things that we can talk about openly at work. And it, and it's about building that, um, community as well that for a much more diverse workforce in the future so you know i would probably say tailoring your communication is key as well you know when i'm true to who i am it naturally builds a genuine connection with candidates as well so being that they you know can trust me which is really important especially when we're going to have difficult conversations down the line you know things like advising on offers giving feedback you know these are always things that you know i've been in recruitment now for over 10 years and i still when I have to give a rejection um, and talk to them about constructive feedback, I still take it a little bit personally. And I just think to myself like, oh God, I have to make this phone call. And actually being authentic and saying, look, hey, I want to tell you all the great things first. Don't take this as a bad thing. You know, maybe we're not going forward today, but these are some really great things that you can work on and we'd love to continue the conversation. These are the things that you really should focus on. So, you know, having that authenticity and, and sh generally showing your care side across your social media, across your everyday interactions, it breaks down the barriers, doesn't it? It's already Absolutely. broken down the barriers and it's going to make conversations easier to navigate. Absolutely. And I think that's, that, that's just summarised everything perfectly. I mean, in this world, in this new digital era of, of AI and social media, it really is the human skills 
it's their time to shine. And and, and I think mm. what you just described then is is just a, a one example of that, right? So, Lewis, mm. I really want to thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. This has been such an informative session. I've learned a lot. Um, I've got to know you as well a little bit more and we'll continue that journey. I've, I've absolutely loved meeting you recently and thank you for all your support in the rubber band community and all the knowledge that you share. And yeah, I can't wait to continue watching your journey. You're a fascinating human and, you know, thank you once again for all that you do. Yeah, thank you for your invite. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.